Hi, this is Jennifer, and I am the owner of Jennifer's Handmade Soap and this YouTube channel, The Soap Artists. This is my first tutorial series, and I'm excited to present Creating Gradients in Cold Process Soap. This series looks at the math behind creating gradients. There are different ways that you can create gradients. You can be precise and use math to split your layers. You can do it freestyle. There isn't a right or wrong way. There are just different ways. And this tutorial series will present how to use the math to create your gradients. I will have a bonus video that talks about ombres, which is basically your freehanding of creating gradients. So let's get started. I'm going to be splitting this into four parts. Part one is going to be a two color, seven layer gradient. Part two, we'll stick with two colors, but we will do nine layers. So we can compare the difference and see if adding those extra layers makes a difference or not. Part three and four will both look at three colors, but one will look at one of them will do at a seven layer and the other we will do a nine layer. So today we are going to start with the two color seven layer gradient. I love the seven layers best. I don't find there's enough of a difference between seven and nine layers that it makes it worth doing the extra nine layers. But there are occasions where I do want to use nine layers. So there is, or there are four steps that we will complete to determine or to figure out everything we need to know to create our layers, There's everything we need to create our uh, gradients. So the first step you're going to have to do is determine your layer weight. How much soap does each layer need? This is based off your batch weight. I am not giving a specific recipe. I will do an example with a recipe of my own, but everyone has different molds that they use. Their recipes tend to be different weights. So I am going to be working with a two and a half pound mold when I do all of my soaps. You'll see that in the videos. I do a water discount. So my actual batch weight is going to be different probably from yours. So go to your recipe and determine your total batch weight, the total amount of oils, lye, and water that you are going to be using. You're going to take that and you're simply going to divide it by the number of layers that you want. In this case, we're going to be using seven layers. So total batch weight, divide by the number of layers, and that's going to give you X. X is important because that's going to help us determine everything from here on out uh, when we do our calculations. So here's an example. I did pick an even number just to make this first example easy you are not going to get nice round hole numbers most likely uh, really does depend on your batch weight but you're probably going to be using decimals that's okay so uh, let's say we have a 42 ounce batch and we want seven layers what do we do we take 42 ounces we divide that by seven and what do we get six ounces so each layer is going to contain six ounces of soap total so that part is fairly simple. Step two, we need to know how much soap we need of each color. This is again, easy. We have two colors. We just divide it by two. Take our total batch weight, divide by two. So each color is gonna make up 50% of our batch. So 42 ounces divided by two, we're gonna need to split our batch into two 21 ounce 
sections and we would add color A to one of those and color B to the other. Very simple. When we get to three colors, it gets a little bit more complicated. Next, we need to split up our layers. So this is where the tricky part comes in. If we want an even gradient, we want to make sure that we're precise in our measurements. We are going to be mixing five of those layers. Two of those layers are not going to have any color mixed because they're going to be solid. It's going to be all color A or all color B. So you can see in this chart that color A starts and if you look at the column next to it, the, it's blank. That's because we're not actually going to be mixing any color in that. And if you go down to the bottom, you'll see the same thing for color B. The parts that we will be mixing are the next five layers. When you are setting up your math, what we need to know is how many parts we need, not how many layers. So if you look at this as a labeled, we have six parts and seven layers. Be careful not to confuse layers with parts when doing the math because it will throw you off. So that being said, how do we determine the percentage that each layer needs? Well, we have six parts. We just divide each side by six. So color A, six parts divided by six, color A, five parts divided by six, and that is going to give us the following results. So we need 100% on the first layer. We knew that. That makes sense. On the second layer, we're going to be using 83.4%. 83 on the fourth, we're going to be using 66.7 and so forth. Those numbers are fixed. You don't have to do the math. I've done it for you. I'm just showing you how I came up with each of these values. Where we do the math is this next part. So remember how we determined X, which is the amount of soap that each layer is going to have? Well, we need to come back to that. We're going to take X and we're going to multiply it by the percentages that we just determined. So you can see this chart right here. This is everything you need to create your layers. You're simply going to plug in X here with whatever your layer weight is do the math and that will tell you how much soap you're going to be needing for each layer and each color. So let's apply this to our 42 ounce batch. X equals 6 in our case. So you see I've inputted 6 where on the previous chart I had the X's. Now I just do the math. Six times one is six ounces. Six times 0.834 is five ounces. Six times 0.667 is four ounces and so forth. Now we have everything we need to go make our soap. So what does that chart mean? Well, you're simply going to add up each row. So the first layer, uh, we need six ounces of color A and nothing of color B. The second layer, we need five ounces of color A and one ounce of color B, and so forth. So put seven cups in front of you, and in the first cup, pour six ounces. In the second cup, pour five ounces of color A and one ounce of color B. In the third cup, pour four ounces of color A, two ounces of color B. And just repeat this following the chart and our calculations, and you will have the seven layers you need. From there, it's simple. Mix your color in, mix your fragrance in, and then you're going to pour each layer. This is kind of a visual to show you how much soap and of what color is in each cup. Now I've created a video and I'm going to show you this video, but I wanted to put forth the math so that you could see exactly how we figure out our measurements. Everything you need is right here. 
I have, however, created a 22 page handout that has all four parts that we're going to be going over. So the two color gradients as well as the three color gradients and templates, blank templates for all of these. So if you just want to be able to print off the templates, fill in your math and have that to work off of, I am selling those. I will put a link in the comments for you to find those. You do not need the handouts, but if you're one of those who like to have things to read over, all of that is spelled out in detail in those handouts. If you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below and I will come back and answer those. So that's the math. Now we are going to go in and actually make a batch of soap. Hi, welcome to my first tutorial series on gradients. So I have put together a number of different videos that talk all about gradients, how to create them. There are many ways you can do gradients. I am giving you the math to create equal layers. It doesn't mean that this is the only way to do gradients. There are variations on gradients like ombres. It's a really fun, wide open kind of technique that you can do a lot of different stuff with. So this first part is going to explore a two color, seven layer gradient. I'm going to break it down and show you every step I'm doing and then future videos will kind of pick up right after the math, the mixing, when we're getting ready to create our colors and layers. Okay, so you can see I have a lot of stuff on this table right now. We are going to be using mixing cups. Um, I use a variation of paper and reusable plastic cups. I have my lye and my oils ready to go, my colorants, fragrance, stick blender, tools that I need, and most importantly, our math sheet. So the first part of this video, we went over how to do all the math. I have printed out one of my templates and filled everything out. So I'm going to start by mixing my lye water and oils. I'm going to get that to a very, very, very light trace. And then we're going to start splitting things up and making these layers. This is a cordless stick blender. I am not a fan of it, but <laughs> my cord one does not quite reach this workstation. This is basically at a really light trace. Probably not quite a trace, but since we're going to be stick blending it more, I am not going to stick blend it any further. So the first step that we need to do is split this batter up into two equal parts. So I've done the math. My total batch weight is 38 ounces. I'm going to need to divide it by two to create obviously two equal parts, which gives me 19. So I'm going to measure out 19 ounces into my first cup. And do the same into my next cup. Set that aside. I went a little over on this one and I knew I did. Okay. So I have my two colorants, or two cups divided, which will be my two colors. I am using um, teal basically peacock and light gold from this one's from brambleberry so i'm going to measure out normally i would pre-mix these colors 
but I know that these micas will mix easily into the oils with just a little bit of stick blending, so I'm not that worried. Now, I am going to hop over and mix these with my other stick blender, so I'll be right back. Okay, so these are at a light trace. I do not want to get it too thick because if it starts getting thick, you're gonna have trouble when it comes to pouring your layers. So what I need to do is split this up into basically seven cups. I have five here and then some will remain in these two cups. I've done the math and I know how much I need of color A in each cup and in color B of each cup. So I'm just going to follow that. So I'm gonna start with teal on the bottom and work my way up to white. So this is gonna be color A. This is gonna be the base. So I'm in our layer one. So I'm gonna start with layer two on my chart. And it says I need 4.5 ounces of color A. So I'm going to pour out 4.5 from this batch. And then I need 0.91 of color B. Move these colors. I have not added my fragrance yet. I'm using a slow moving fragrance because um, again I want to have time and I will not add the fragrance until I'm ready to pour each layer. So now I'm doing layer three and I want 3.6 ounces of color a and 1.8 of color B. Layer four is going to be 2.7 ounces of each color. This is our middle layer, so they should be equal. Layer five is going to be 1.8 of A. And 3.6 of color B. And then layer six is 0.9. and 4.5 of color B. Okay, so I have my seven colors and now I am going to mix them up, add the fragrance, and pour each layer. So I'm going to start with my blue. I'm going to add the fragrance that I need. Just mix that in really well. Then pour this first layer in. So the next video will be a two color nine layer. And I'm going to do the exact same colors scent everything. So you can kind of compare. My experience shows that I don't see enough of a gradient difference or smoothness that it's worth doing the extra two 
color divisions or two layers, um, you can. But generally when I do it, I just stick with a seven layer gradient. Um, if I freehand it, then that I can definitely do many, many, many more layers. Uh, and you can definitely get a more, a smoother, I should say, gradient. But typically, I like the division of it. I just like knowing that everything's equal. So you can see I've mixed in the white. There wasn't a ton of white in this one. But it's still a little bit lighter than what we just poured. So now the goal is to pour and not break through the first layer. I pour over my spatula very gently, very slowly. When I get impatient, it breaks through. This one is, I think, going through a little bit. Try as I might, it's not the end of the world. So this one has even more white in it and as you can see it's just creating a slightly lighter color with each layer that we pour. Okay. So same thing. Gently pour. The closer to the top you get the easier it gets to pour the layers. This cup is an equal mixture of our blue and our white. What I love about this is as you pour, a lot of times it's like, wow, that doesn't look very much, the color doesn't look very different between one layer and the next, which I mean, you really don't want it to, we're doing a gradient, but it's when you cut it that suddenly it all comes together and you just see that moving of, or shifting from one color to the next. I love gradients. I don't do a ton of them because one, they're just time consuming. Two, you have to be working with the right fragrance. Um, I said you do need time to work when you're making gradients. And three, it's much harder to make larger batches with gradients. I mean, it can be done, but I said it's just harder. And since I'm usually working, like this is a two and a half pound batch, but usually I'm working with 10 pound batches and it just gets harder to do gradients the larger the batch size becomes. Can be done, don't get me wrong but I just find it harder to do. And again, it takes more time to do. This is definitely more time consuming than mixing a couple colors and doing an in the pot swirl. And I love in the pot swirls. Um, I like all sorts of techniques. So a lot of times I just it depends on the design, what I'm going for. That will sometimes dictate which design method I will use. Okay. So this is layer five. We've got two more after this. 
and you can see it's definitely getting lighter and lighter. This is not going to have the same gradient as an ombre, which I really do like those looks. I typically free style it, so I just eyeball, I add a little, add a little, add a little, and I create many more layers. I'm also not as worried about layers breaking through. Um, but again, there's not a right and a wrong way. There's just a lot of different ways that you can create gradients. So this is one way. This is simply, if you want equal layers with an equal color division, this is how you can do that. Okay, so you can see this soap is, is getting thicker already. Even at a really light trace this is why I don't add my fragrance until right before I'm ready to pour each layer. Unless I know it's a super, super, super slow mover and it won't make any difference. Um, I just add it right before I'm going to pour. That way it doesn't set up anymore. Okay, and I did not mix all of the blue on the bottom, so now this blue is actually darker, a little bit darker. So I don't know if I actually want to pour it in. It's not a whole lot, so I think I might leave it out. So I don't affect the gradient. And then this is the last color, the white. I don't, this isn't actually white, it's a light gold. It's still in the white family to me. I don't do a ton, like I'll do ombres with white more than I do gradients because you get to that white and there's just no color blend. Like you can't, <laughs> there's gonna be a distinct difference in color between this last layer of teal white mixture and the top layer. So a lot of times I like to use completely solid colors like purple to pink or blue to yellow or any type of, you know, orange to, to yellow color combo like that just because you don't have that vast difference between the last two layers with that white. Um, there are times where I add a tiny bit, like the tiniest bit of blue to soften this white up or whatever color I'm, I'm using with the white so that that last layer isn't, doesn't stand out. For this, I didn't mind that this color is going to stand out. I like this look. I think the color combo goes well together. So I was totally okay with that. But just a heads up if you are using any white or gold or really light color um, that it might... Like I said, there's going to be a distinction between the last two layers. Uh, and we are going for a gradient, so sometimes a distinction might not be what you want. So there we have it. We've poured all seven layers. So you can see the gradient moving up the side, and we can also see that this top layer really does stand out. That's okay. I like that. So. Come back tomorrow for when I cut this to see what we have. Okay, so we are going to cut the two color seven layer right now and see what we got. Uh, 
I was not perfect with my mixing there. Obviously some blue did not get totally mixed in. That one's a little better. It kind of feels like the ocean moving up to the sand or the beach. Not my best of pouring straight layers. You can see that the layers pushed up along the side, but still cool. I like the effect. There we go.